Bonsoir. <laughs> That's French, by the way. Uh, passion, as most of us experience it, is fleeting. It's that feeling we get at the very beginning of a relationship, that feeling we have of being in love. But if you were to break it down, it's really maybe not such a great feeling. The butterflies in the stomach, the you know, loss of appetite, the obsessive thinking that we have, doesn't that sound like anxiety? It sounds like anxiety to me. <laughs> and yet, it's the one thing we seek out. It's the one thing we try to recapture. So many times, so many times, people come to me and say, please help us get back what we had in the beginning. How do we have as much sex as we had in the beginning? And unfortunately, my answer is, I can't, can't really help you with that. And I give them an, a question back. Can you get your virginity back? Huh? You can't make something old new again. You can't make something old new again. But you can inject passion. And there are things, of course, that we can do. And I can talk to you tonight about how we can have passionate experiences to sustain our relationships long term. So many of us come to have expectations right? We have expectations about sexuality. We have expectations about love. Love conquers all. And these expectations hurt us. They hurt our relationships. They unfortunately, um, you know, have quite an impact and it really hurts us. So one of the things, my biggest pet peeve is when I hear people say things like, I love my partner, but I'm not in love with them. Have you ever heard that before? I'm sure you have, and a lot of people who get divorced will often say that. I love them, but I'm not in love with them. But you cannot maintain that in love state forever. Love grows, love deepens. In fact, it's like a slow burning fire, right? You can inject passion just like you can make flames in a low, slow burning fire by fanning the flames, doing something. So how do we go about injecting passion into our long-term relationships, into relationships that are years old? Couples often come to me and they say, we have a problem in communication. I'm not so sure that it's a problem in communication. We want our partner to think the way we do. We want them to communicate the way we do. We want them to think and to know what it is that we want. But are we good mind readers? Can we do that as humans? We can't do that. And we need to not change how our partner communicates. We need to accept and understand how they communicate. When you feel understood by your partner, doesn't that create some passion, right? So before, which it requires compassion. That's the key word here. And before passion, you really do need the compassion. So think about that one. As couples, when we have children, we focus exclusively on the family. We virtually spend no time together as a couple. Have you experienced this as family people? We all of us have. We neglect ourselves. We neglect the couple. And that's not good for our relationships. It has to be about me first. I know that may sound selfish, but a good, happy, healthy me makes me a better partner, makes me a better parent. A happy couple, when you have a happy couple, you have a good basis for a family. You teach your kids uh, a good marriage. And then comes the couple. Unfortunately, this is the part we have a hard time with. Because most of us, when we're not spending time with our kids, how do we feel? Guilt, right? We feel guilty. Now, as a couple, when we come together, we are a unit. But we are a unit comprised of two separate individuals. That individuality is really important. It makes relationships stronger. We don't become one and the same. So that notion of we become one, throw it out the window. It doesn't work. Having, that, having your individuality 
doesn't mean you don't want to be with your partner. It just means you want to grow as an individual. That makes us more interesting to our partner, more interesting. And that breeds passion. So how many of you go on vacation with your kids? Is it restful? Be honest. Do you have a restful time? I can tell you when I would go on vacation with my kids, I would come back more exhausted. We had beautiful memories. It was, a, you know, wonderful pictures. It was great. However, I was still running after them, changing diapers, cleaning up, doing everything that had to be done. Not restful for me. So my husband and I, we've been married for 23 years, and for the first, say, 15 years, we decided we were going to have separate vacations. So we took a family vacation, and then I would go away for a week, and he would go away. And let me tell you, I get bad reactions from this. Like, people, like, look at me and say, what? Um, <laughs> but we did it anyway, okay? Uh, and this really, so we take our separate vacations, and, you know, now that the kids are older, we go on vacations together for longer than, uh, say, you know, an, an overnight. Could I stand here and talk to you about passion without talking to you about sex? No, I've got to talk to you about sex. Not that I've got to, I want to. <laughs> it's what I do. Um, people often wonder, and I'm sure every one of us in this room has wondered, how often should we be having sex? Care to throw out a number? <laughs> there is no number. I can throw out statistics, and you know, the ladies here would know just by reading those magazines and the covers of all these magazines that say, you know, couples are having sex 2.23 times a week, or whatever it is. Think about where those surveys are coming from. They're coming from those readers. It's not uh, representative of the population. There is no normal. There is no norm. Every couple creates their own norm. Believe me, your neighbor isn't doing it any more than you. Okay? <laughs> Trust me on that one. One in six couples, by the way, one in six couples have sex less than 10 times a year. Huh? Um, <laughs> And studies have shown, they just released a study that showed the happiness level. We would think that the more sex you have, the happier you are. No, there's a sweet spot. That sweet spot is once a week. So couples who had sex once a week tended to be the happiest. If you had sex five more times, it didn't make you any happier. Some people might not be happy to hear that, but nonetheless, <laughs> that's what it is. <laughs> um, the other part... So I get asked a lot about frequency, but then I get asked a lot about desire. Desire, that's a big one, especially when it comes to men and women. Now, I'm, I'm going to talk generally here to you, but when, especially women, some men, once we get into a relationship, once we get past the initial in-love, in-lust stage, and that, you know, science has shown us lasts anywhere from six months to 18 months, two years. Once we get past that, we lose the spontaneous desire for sex. We lose the get up and go, that the need, the feeling of being horny, if you will, okay, for lack of a better word. And it's unfortunate because we lose that, but we don't lose the interest. We don't lose the attraction to our partner. We're still very much attracted to our partner. We're still uh, very much love our partner. Um, we still are even interested in sex. We may not have the get up and go. But once we engage in sex, once we engage in sex, what happens? We enjoy it, and we want to continue, and the desire then kicks in. Um, and so this is a, an area that's really important. So obviously, there's a choice to be made. You need to, at that point, choose sex. You're not going to choose sex if your relationship is in trouble. If you're angry with your partner, if you're resentful, you won't be choosing sex. Let's be real. If you're bored, that's another thing. Change it up. Do something in your relationship. Inject some difference. And believe me, it's not about hanging off the chandeliers. I mean, if you want to do that, go ahead, uh, but it might be a little dangerous. But change things up, whether it's sharing fantasies, whether it's talking to your partner about sex, reading a book together, visiting a sex shop, exploring sex toys, whatever it is, you need to change it up. But we also have to change our definition of sex. 
When we think sex, we think intercourse. When I think sex, I think sexuality. In my books, whatever I won't do with my brother is part of sex. Hand-holding, caressing, cuddling, anything that makes you feel connected is part of sex. And as we get older and our relationships get older, it, the genital part is less important, but the connection part is really important. So at the beginning of a relationship, passion happens spontaneously. It just happens. It's part of that being in love and lust phase. And as we get older in our relationships, as the relationships get older, whether you're in a relationship that's 10 years old at 30 or at 40 or at 50, doesn't matter, then you still have to do something to inject it. So a few things to remember. Some of the things you need to do is let go of your expectations. Let go of your expectations. Accept that love changes. Remember, not just in love and love, but love changes. Prioritize the couple. Prioritize the couple. Maintain your individuality. Maintain that. Approach with compassion and choose sex. Passion is possible in long-term relationships. It just requires that little bit of effort. Thank you.